All right. We have about 50 to 60 people registered, so we'll definitely let them all come through. We're super excited. Fantastic. I'm excited to talk about the curriculum and the program and uh, kind of my teaching philosophy. Yeah. And just anything else that we have time for and definitely entertain lots of questions. Absolutely. And for those who are already on, um, we do have a Q&A feature. So if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see where it says Q&A. You can absolutely drop your question in there. Um, I am able to see it and then we will if there's like things that I can answer very quickly, then I will chat back. If not, um, I'll definitely let Susan know the questions and she will, um, she's awesome. Y'all are gonna fall in love with her like we have absolutely. She's such a great individual just to be on your team and in your life. So um, she is going to help all of the things, help us out with all of the things. So welcome, welcome for those who are still logging on. We still have about six minutes. Um, so if you guys need to grab water, use the restroom, do whatever you need to do. Um, if you need a snack, I know some of you guys may be right in the middle of the lunch hour. Does not hurt our feelings if you're chowing down a little bit. <laughs> and for those of you who just want to keep track of stuff, um, you might want to have a pencil and paper handy or some way to maybe take notes because this it's going to be a, quite a bit of information, and uh, of course, this will be recorded and viewable later. But uh, but some people, as you're going to find out, whenever we start talking about educational principles, um, taking this is actually very helpful yes. for memory uh, retrieval. And I am going to put my email um, admissions. Um, so if anything comes up, you know, afterwards, or if you have more questions regarding our processes, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I want to be able to support you to the best ability that I can. Fantastic. Right. Still about five minutes, so we have, we have some time left. Okay, great. All right, people are logging on. I'm super excited. I love, oh, I always love these admissions webinars. I feel like it's just such a great time to connect and get to know everyone and um, yeah, and like really get to know you as well, Susan, as our program director. Well, I've had a blast uh, putting the program together and it's kind of like, when I was kind of given a blank slate before it's given the uh, requirements for New Mexico state licensure, it was kind of like, what is the ideal program? So yeah. I really do you feel like you created the ideal program? I am I think so too. I'm not even in the massage world, but I think it's the best program just from everything that you've you know, spoken to me about and as I'm learning more and more from you as well. How, um, how get, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm gonna get one more thing, get one more thing. hang on. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get a prop, hang on. We love props. <laughs> Hi everyone, everyone who's logged in so far, Agnes and Ashley, Kathy, Kirsten. If this is the same Kirsten I studied with, hello, it's so nice to see you. Um, Roseanne and Tom, welcome, welcome everyone. Again, we still have um, about three to four minutes and we, we can even wait, you know, Susan, a minute or two after 1130 just to make sure that um, we have everyone. I know sometimes it's a little bit takes a minute to get zoom loaded and all that kind of stuff so I want to, I want to clear off some noise makers on my end too while waiting. Yeah, I'm I'm turning all my noise noise makers off right now <laughs> if you guys don't mind um, while we are waiting for everyone to log on why don't you guys drop in the chat where you guys are logging in from um, I know our audience is all over the world, and so we'd love to see where you're coming in from, and that way we can also support you. You know, if you are looking to come in this January session, um, we can support your transition into Albuquerque if you're not local. Um, and we just love getting to know you guys.
And Susan, I would like to touch on the admissions process, um, you know, and we can do that whenever um, feels best for you as well, but that way all the logistical stuff can also be taken care of. Perfect. I love that idea. So can I see the chats too or you just be able you? to, Susan? So if you just oh, click the at the bottom, yeah. All right, we have Kathy in from Wisconsin. Hello. I'm actually going to be in Wisconsin early next year at the AMTA conference. So oh, if you're from nice. Wisconsin, check it out. I was just contacted by New Jersey. So that might be something that's going to be an online web, uh, uh, educational event. But that's another fun thing we could be playing with. A lot of a lot happening. And that's the kind of exciting thing is that we're going to be networking with massage therapists all over the world. Absolutely. Um, I'm be doing a con I just did a conference, uh, a chronic pain conference in the UK. So, uh, so I got a chance to kind of pull in some of the UK uh, uh, massage therapists into the massage community here in the States. So that was really kind of fun. So, so you really will be part of a worldwide community. And that's going to be, it's really one of our tenants, one of our principals at the school is the whole concept of, um, building that community and and sustainable community to support exactly. you throughout your career. Yes. And I just plugged my computer and that would be terrible if my computer died right in the middle. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to do that. All right, we'll just wait one or two more minutes and then we can absolutely get started. New Hampshire, I'm seeing good, awesome. Iowa, oh my goodness, Cedar Rapids. I've been there a few times. There's some great massage therapists over there. Uh, Ralph Stevens too. You, you, you guys may know Ralph. He actually graduated from New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics, the same my alma mater. So um, it's kind of fun to see some of the places that are uh, that are being represented here. And if you guys just logged in, if you don't mind dropping where you're logging in from, um, Susan is connected in pretty much every single massage community in the whole wide world. So I'm sure she knows someone from where you are. So it looks like. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he was actually one of the contributors to my textbook with the seated massage stuff. So um, just a really great guy uh, to, to connect with. All right, Susan, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'd love to introduce you formally, um, if that's okay. So um, welcome, welcome everyone to our very first admissions webinar for the New Mexico School of Massage. Um, my name is Nishida. I am the admissions um, team member at the school, and I'm super excited to be working with all of you um, in your dreams and aspirations to come study the beautiful science and art of massage. Um, I have put my email into the chat and it's pretty simple. It's just admissions at nmschoolofmassage.com. So if at any point you guys have questions, um, I'm absolutely here to support you um, in your journey, in your process to becoming massage therapist. So however we can support you, no question is too little or too big for us. Um, we want you to really feel as though you are part of our family family um, and our community within the New Mexico School of Massage. So please, please, please never feel like you can't reach out. Um, we're absolutely here for you. I'm also just a phone call away. I'll drop that number as well. It's 505-633-9999. Pretty simple to remember. Um, so please just also give me a phone call if you need anything, okay? Um, and we'll go through the admissions processes at some point to kind of really get the logistics of everything. But without further ado, I would love to introduce our um, program director, Susan Salvo. Dr. Susan Salvo. Um, for those of you who don't know her, um, she is the Yoda of massage, okay? And when I was not kidding, when I said that everyone in the massage world knows Susan, okay? She is the best of the best. She is the one who's written the textbooks on massage. Um, she is on the National Massage Board. She writes the national exams for massage. So if you want to learn massage, this is the source, y'all, okay? She is the source of everything massage. Um, she has 
a huge passion for teaching. She's got a doctorate in education as well. Um, and she's very passionate about research and how we can really, really bring massage to all aspects of life. So um, we are absolutely thrilled that she is our program director. And when I mean you are learning from the source, I do not kid in any, even like an iota of that statement okay she is the absolute best she's super humble um and she is one of i don't know i just feel like she's one of my great friends you know she's so personable and she wants to be an advocate for every one of her students um and so susan i will hand it over to you and then um yeah i'll be bringing in the questions and then um i might pause here and there but please take it away thank you thank you for being here and um giving your time to our prospective students well, thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. So uh, I graduated from the massage school in Albuquerque. So it, it is my alma mater and kind of my massage home. Um, and so uh, when I think about my massage family, and I think about my massage as a family, massage community as a family, I do consider my teachers at the New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics um, kind of my massage parents. And so I really understand, I really fell in love not only with massage therapy and massage education in massage school, um, but I also fell in love with learning. So it's kind of my launch pad for learning. And honestly, the year that I went through massage school, which is the early 80s, it was truly the best year of my life. Uh, I learned so much about myself. I learned how to help other people. I learned a, a rewarding career. And when I am in that classroom, I am completely mindful of how important the massage school experience is and how impactful it can be. And I treat it with that kind of respect. So every single day, I try to make the massage experience, educational experience, not only uh, nurturing, uh, we want, definitely want to nurture your intellectual curiosity, but also that is also a launch pad because we're not forgetful of the fact that we're teaching you a career. So it is career training as well. But we're also mindful that you're going to be learning some life skills. So as you're because not only are you becoming a, a, a student, a practitioner of massage therapy, you're also going to become a teacher for your clients. And you're going to become a role model for healthy lifestyle and for career longevity and for self-care. So all of those things we have woven into our curriculum. So let's start there. Let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. So um, the, uh, what, there are three pillars of education. Let's, I'm going to go with that one. Three pillars of education. And so the first, uh, the first pillar of education is the curriculum. The second pillar of education is the instruction. And the third pillar of education is assessment. So what the curriculum is, is outlining of your content. So we have taken, uh, we have done two things. We've taken as our foundation what is required by New Mexico for state licensure. But we've also very much integrated what the content outline is for two major licensing exams. The first of which is going to be the licensing exam offered by the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards. And uh, the second one is the outline that is published by the National, uh, the, the National NCBT, the National Certification Board of Therapy Massage and Body Work. So we've, we've taken those three things and we've created what we consider a really good curriculum. Now, New Mexico divides the curriculum up into four key areas. The first key area is going to be your sciences. It's going to be your anatomy, your physiology, your pathology, and your kinesiology. And anatomy is the study of st structures. The physiology is what those structures do or the function. Uh, the third is pathology, which is the study of diseases and conditions such as injuries uh, and, and such as that in congenital conditions, such as a birth defect. And then the last one is kinesiology, which is a study of uh, motion, human motion. And with that category, we can be talking about what I consider uh, skeletal and muscular nomenclature. So it's learning the bones and the muscles and what they do to produce movement. So that's the very first area of the curriculum. The second area of the curriculum is going to be just your general instruction. And that's going to be things like uh, your business, your ethics. Um, we could be talking a little, bit, a little bit about hydrotherapy in that section. Um, and then from there, we're going to be talking about some other electives. Now, uh, we're going to classify some of the electives as clinical massage applications. So when we're thinking about where you guys are going to be working after you graduate, there's 
this is really two main areas. You're going to either be working in the wellness setting uh, or you're going to be working in the clinical setting. Wellness setting is going to be like private practice and, and uh, salons and spas, massage franchises on a wellness population. And then clinical massage is going to be working with clients who are in hospital settings, clinical settings, chiropractic clinics, uh, physical therapy clinics. So uh, we, we're going to be considered that as, as an elective, an add-on piece, because you can't really get to those topics until you've had a, a foundation of uh, the basic Swedish massage techniques, basic assessments, basic documentation, and also um, a little bit about pathology. You have to have those that foundation first. So we've moved that content later on in the program. And, um, and it's, there's a big push right now in research and evidence-informed practice. So we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about what does the research say? What does the evidence say? And using concepts called triangulation. In fact, at a certain point, you're going to be expected to do a research paper uh, in which you're going to be able to come up with a topic of your choice or a condition of your choice. And then you're going to research it. You're going to do a lot of what's called a literature review. You're going to find, find out what's known about a topic. And then um, you're either going to be encouraged to do a, a case study or just you could be able to talk about what is known in massage about this topic. And of course, and it can be massage, it can be uh, adjuncts to massage, such as aromatherapy. It can be adjuncts to massage, such as uh, there's a lot of going on right now, massage therapy. There's taping, use of kinesio tape. There's cupping, the use of uh, glass or plastic cups. Um, there is eye stem instrument assist to soft tissue mobilization. There's things like PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. There's things like strain and counter strain. So all of these things are going to be in that clinical massage section, but they can be part of your research paper, depending on whatever topic you're going to be focusing it on. And the last piece is going to be your practicum, which is what some people call it a public clinic, where we're going to open up the school and uh, we're going to be inviting uh, members of the community to come receive massage sessions for you. So you're going to get a whole lot of experience of how to apply what you've learned. These are called the KSAs in education. K stands for knowledge, S stands for skill, and A stands for ability. But in order to get to that A that in KSA, you've got to be able to get some massages under your belt. You've got to be able to practice on a wide variety of people, all ages, all populations, all conditions. So you are ready when you graduate from that school to be put in situations where you can be working with the general population. So again, those are the four main uh, classifications of the curriculum. Now, when we are thinking about how we're going to be able to teach, that's the instructional piece, the curriculum, we're going to take that curriculum and we can divide it up into about 16 weeks. And you're going to be going five days a week for the day class. And that's going to be uh, eight to six, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, stopping about, of course, there'll be a break about every hour. Uh, what the state law usually says is 10 minutes for every clock hour of instruction. And then you're going to be having a nice two hour break. So between noon and two, taking a break and really resting and, 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 and enjoying the camaraderie of your classmates, maybe going for a walk, self-care. And you're going to go back in the classroom for four more hours. So you go from two to six. And, um, and that's really what the instructional piece. And, and I will tell you, uh, working with Nishida and other people uh, at the Ayurvedic Institute out of Prana, we have created this amazing faculty. I cannot, if you get a chance, go on the website and take a look at the faculty page. I had more fun interviewing these people <laughs> and kind of handpicking them with, with, the, with the team. There was a whole uh, team that, that uh, was looking at all of these uh, applicants, candidates is what they called. Uh, and I really feel like we have created the best of the best. So when you're learning nutrition, you're learning from a nutritionist. When you're learning clinical massage, you're learning from someone who's been doing it for many, many years. Uh, when you're uh, learning, uh, and there's also a whole Ayurvedic piece, which, which, which I'll let uh, Nishita talk about. Um, so there's the curriculum and the instruction is just really, really solid in this program. And the last pillar of education is assessments. So we are going to be giving you lots of assessments. But if you look at the research, what, that's, what that uh, implies is that the best way to prepare you for licensing exams and certification exams is to give you practice tests. 
So um, at, at the very end of the program, so we've laid the foundation throughout the program. We've given you the anatomy, the physiology, the pathology, the, uh, the kinesiology. We've given you information about the techniques, the body stances, the self-care, the documentation. You practice it with your, um, your clinical practicum, your, your public clinic. And then the last few weeks of the program, we're going to be just going back from the beginning and kind of tying all these things together. So because you're going to forget, you know, we haven't talked about pathology in a while. So the very last uh, two weeks of the program, we're going to, you're going to dive back into every little thing. And we're going to be taking lots, lots of practice tests. And there's a really interesting way that we're going to do this. So we're going to give you uh, like 50 questions at first. And then you're going to see how you do. And then you're going to, we're going to be only studying the things that you don't know, that you don't remember, you don't understand. And what you're going to find out is your level of understanding is going to change as you go through the program. So the first time you hear a topic, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is something new. Well, then as you apply it through the KSA process and through the clinical process, your level of understanding will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. So by the time you get to that end, you're going to be able to have the ability and the understanding to be able to, to do well on, um, on these practice tests. And, and we give you the practice test as study guides. So we're building the foundation at the very end. So when you graduate, you are not only ready, job ready, but you're also uh, licensing exam ready. And we don't feel like we've done our job until you pass that licensing exam. So, um, and I love to use the metaphor of, of pregnancy as going through massage school. So, so when you are going through massage school, like, like right now is the conception piece, you know, uh, working with the admissions, that's, that's your conception stage. When school starts, that's your gestation stage, okay? So it's, it's about a 16 week gestation <laughs> when you go into the program. And, uh, and then graduation is the birth, right? Graduation, getting that licensing exam is the birth. But then going back to the pregnancy metaphor, now you've got this newborn baby. We're going to call it your practice. And if, you, if for those of you who've been around babies or have babies or children, you know that the first few years are the most important. They're most important and also the most physically and mentally exhausting. So you're going to be that baby, you can put a lot of time and energy into that practice, into that very new career, and you're going to build it and build it and build it until it until you're no longer raising, but rearing. And I love those two different terms when you're talking about children uh, is in that really to think about it, my baby is 40 years old but it's, it's so robust because I spent the time, and we're going to be teaching you this during your business class. I've spent the time nurturing that baby after graduation to get it in the direction I want it to go. So the, again, those are the three pillars of education, the curriculum piece, which we talked about, the assessment piece, which is the, the which is the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, instructional piece, which is the faculty and how we teach it. And, and again, and, and how long and, and how many hours in a day. And then the uh, assessment piece, which is all the practice tests. And, and plus this lets us know not only how you're doing as an individual student, how your cohort is doing, which means everyone in your classroom and how the instruction piece is doing. So it's a way for us to kind of evaluate our own selves. And Susan, so, um, at some point, I'm sorry, um, at some point, will you also speak to state licensure versus taking the national licensing exam as well? It doesn't have to be in this moment, but at some point we've had a lot of questions come through about that. Okay, absolutely. Okay, so a licensure, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, uh, the metaphor of a driver's license as an example. A license, a license, a massage license, a professional license is something that you have to have to, uh, to perform a professional service on the general public. So in New Mexico, you have to uh, go through massage school, 650 hours minimum. Um, you have to pass a licensing exam, which is the MBLEX, which is a uh, which is offered by the Federation and you have to apply and pay your fees. Now that, that license is, it has to be renewed just like your driver's license every few years. And that, that renewal process usually involves CE classes, which is another whole conversation we should have, uh, which, and what CE really stands for is that you're able to keep up with changes in the profession. Cause don't you know, the profession changes over time. Absolutely. 
Yeah, the, the <laughs> program that I yeah, that's right, that's right. The program that I went through 40 years ago, I guarantee you, is a very different program now. Like for instance, uh, endangerment science weren't really talked about. Documentation really wasn't talked about 40 years ago. Pathologies wasn't required when I went through school. Um, and, um, and of course, an evidence-based practice. So all those things, you know, are basically new, but if you went to school five years ago, maybe that was a hole in your curriculum. So CE classes fill that hole. Okay, you know, making sense? Absolutely. So very, very important. Plus it's a way for you to develop new skills or it's a way for you to polish skills. Because even though in our program, even though you're going to get exposed to things like taping and cupping um, and ASTEM and aromatherapy, uh, it, the, the proficiency level is can only be low because we're trying to get you job, job ready. So C classes fill in that gap. It takes, I call it uh, like a survey course, if you're familiar with the concept of yeah. a survey course. So in a clinical massage section, we're just giving you uh, little bites of everything, but to, in order to really get a full serving, you know, full course, then you're going to have to take a C class in it after graduation. Um, so the licensure is required and it's considered minimum level of competency and it's involuntary. It's mandatory. You must do it. Okay. Uh, a certification is voluntary. You don't have to have it. It's desirable, but it's not mandatory. So, uh, like the NCBTMB would be the certification courses. You can get certified in manual lymphatic drainage. You can get certified in reflexology. You can get certified in uh, my fascia release techniques. Um, and again, it's not required for the practice, it's just recommended. And it gives you not only uh, a marketing ability to say, I am certified in X, whatever that is but it also helps you build your own competence and skill level. So we really do believe in both the licensure model, which is the massage school, which is your entry level training and the certification piece, which is your CE training. So, um, and again, as Nashita said, this is part of our vision for the massage school is to give you both, to, to quit that community. So you've got your entry level community. This is the basics. This is what you have to have for licensure. But if you want to, we're gonna encourage you to empower you, because that's another another value, uh, core value of the school, we're going to empower you to take that next step in an area of your own interest. And that's why the research piece is important. It's just going to help tie in those two, those two pieces, the licensure versus certification, because, because not only are you going to be diving into your own topic, but you're going to be exposed to every single topic that your cohort has chosen, and they're going to be different. So I always like to use a metaphor of going to a banquet whenever we're talking about all the different research topics that your, your classmates are going to do. Because even though you've got your well-versed in yours, and let's say it's my fascia release, so someone may, do, may, may be doing craniosacral therapy. Some, um, someone else might be doing manual lymphatic drainage. And you'll hear their topics um, during uh, part of the, uh, when, when the assignments do. And you're going to have support, which, you know, I've got a research background. Uh, there's a lot of writing that's going to be going on. And you'll be able to work with a lot of the teams. The faculty is going to be part of your support. Uh, and, and I will tell you, this another fascinating, fascinating thing about the faculty is every person there has their own level of expertise. So you've got uh, a wealth of information just at your fingertips. And we're going to be able to point you in the right direction, too, while I may say, go talk to Ralph Stevens about this tech technique. And, and that's another thing I love about the massage community is that we're so open sharing with each other. Um, you can talk to someone in another part of the world. You, you, you can talk to the people in, at Jing in, in Brighton uh, in England, and they're like, oh yeah, the door is open. You will be happy to Zoom call you or email you back and forth to support you while you're in massage school and after graduation. So that's a little bit about the curriculum, a little bit about the program, a little bit about our vision. Um, and the faculty also will be undergoing periodic teacher in services taught by myself and other qualified uh, experts in education to make sure that everyone is going to be uh, delivering the absolute best quality education as possible. Absolutely. So do you, uh, do you want to talk about the enrollment process? 
Yeah, I would love to. So um, if you guys visit our website, again, it's just nmschoolofmassage.com. Um, our application is actually live right now. We are taking um, students for our January session. So our January session starts on January 13th, um, and there's going to be two days of orientation. So the 13th, 14th is orientation. And then the 17th, which is a Monday, that's going to be our first official day of classes. Um, and our calendar is live on our website as well. So you can also kind of see when spring break is and all that kind of stuff. So um, like Susan was saying, you'll go through 16 weeks of classes. Um, as far as the application process goes, it's pretty simple. Maybe I'm biased because I helped create it, but everything is online. Um, there is a $100 application fee, um, so you type everything online, it starts on our website, and then um, we do need just a, a picture of you so we can put a name to a face, right? Um, we love to get to know you guys before the process even starts, and then there's a short little essay, um, again, and it's not something to be stressed out about. It can be a couple of paragraphs at the most. We're not looking for like a 10-page paper or anything like that. Again, it's just, hey, we want to get to know why you want to study massage, right? What brought you into this um, space of healing? And then that way, when we are doing our conversation, so you know, you can call it technical interview, um, but it is more of a conversation so we can get to know you. Um, we want to make sure that you feel really good about coming into our community, right? Um, and that you feel great about our culture and what you're going to be getting out of it. That is of equal importance to us, right? So we really like to see this as a relationship. It's not so much only, you know, are you a good candidate for our program, but hey, is this a good program for you as well? Um, and so I like to see these as conversations. So the essay just supports um, kind of directing the conversation so we can get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, and then after that, it's pretty straightforward, right? So um, you'll do an interview with me and then very soon after you'll get to know whether you've been accepted or not and then we'll start the process from there so it's very quick turnaround you know a couple of weeks um, and the decision is made and like I said one of the bigger things we are looking for is like hey is that passion there right like do you want to be in the space you know of healing um, that and I would say and Susan please chime in but I would say that's one of the bigger things we look at you know and again is this a right fit for you as well Great. Okay, so let's turn the uh, conversation around to the attendees. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Just your thoughts about the program. Uh, you know, just a little bit about any questions you have about how things are structured. Yeah, and there are a couple of questions, Susan. Um, I can go ahead and ask if that's okay on behalf of some of the attendees. So we are looking at individuals coming in from other states. So what what is the process of if they come and you know they're doing so just as a Quick FYI, guys, so our program is 700 hours. 650 is going to be that minimum competency for the um, per the guidelines per New Mexico State. And then 50 hours will be dedicated to the Ayurveda piece. So that's where you're going to learn your Marma, your Abhyanga, things like that, okay, your basics of Ayurveda. So our complete program is 700 hours. Now, Susan, if that if there's um, a discrepancy in hours between New Mexico and then if they want to go back to their state, what do they do to fill in the blanks and then how does that process work? Okay, so um, I would say that I just attended a meeting recently. Oh, most programs, like over 50% of the states are 500 hours. So it'll, it'll be less. So you should be able to fulfill any state need. There's two states that are 1,000 hours. And um, so you'll have to go to those states. And one is New York, I forget the other, what the other one is, and ask them what their requirements are. And you pretty much create like a spreadsheet. These are, these are the categories. And, and on the transcript, you'll be able to say, this is anatomy, this is physiology, this is pathology. So you can take that and, and uh, compare it to the state requirements and find out where the holes are. And then what you can do is find out how you can fill in those holes. Some schools... Um, actually uh, offer those extra classes, or you can take them as CE classes. I know that when I, uh, again, going back to how things change, when I went from my license in Louisiana to the New Mexico license, I was actually short in pathology and in ethics, because again, the, the uh, requirements change over time. But in New Mexico, they accepted CE classes. 
And the, I want to say also accepted college courses. It, it, was, it was a fairly seamless process. Um, and it gets kind of funny because I write pathology books and I'm short in pathology. But, uh, but again, it, uh, you, just, you just fulfill those requirements. But for the most part, the 800, I'm sorry, the 700 hour curriculum is going to comply with the lion's share states in the nation. So you okay. should be good. It's always good to check ahead of time. Um, but I would definitely check that out uh, if that is a concern. Okay. Um, but again, going back to my research on state requirements, uh, the 700 hours is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to apply to most states. Okay, great. And then um, a follow-up question to that is, would, and again, I, I probably vary state to state, but do those CE courses to fill in the gaps generally have to be from that state or can it be from other states as well? It can be from any any. Usually, of course, you know, every, every state's different, but, but I know in New Mexico, it was just by uh, an, an approved provider. Okay. And, um, and, and again, and, and you can be approved by NCDTNB or the Federation, or sometimes the state themselves approve it. But there's usually quite a bit of wiggle room to get those requirements done. Because if you think about it, like, like pathology, there's going to be so much more, so much consistency between one program and the next because the standards are going to be the same. Sure. So um, I do not find it to where uh, states are uh, hard nosed about uh, where those hours come from, as long as you could document them. And typically they have to be what's called clock hours. Okay. Uh, and in vocational schools, typically they use clock hours, a 50 minute uh, clock hour. Um, in some uh, higher ed, like uh, college universities, they use a semester hour. So typically it's going to be a, a clock hour. And even CEs uh, to get relicensed, they look at either 12 or 24, 36, whatever the requirement is, a clock hour as being an educational unit. And that's what CE stands for is continuing education unit. And unit usually is a clock hour. Perfect. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. And I think, um, and guys, if the if it's not answering the question, please definitely let us know. Um, a couple of other things coming up about continuing education. Um, yes, we are absolutely going to be offering continuing education. Um, Susan and her team are actually building out um, our first few continuing education courses. Um, and we are hoping to roll those out very soon. You know, I'm, I'm talking like Jan, Feb, um, kind of concurrently. So please be on the lookout for those as well. And um, Susan, if you want to kind of speak to some of them, but I know we're definitely looking at some ethics courses coming up. We're definitely looking at some um, very specific, um, just Ayurveda continuing courses. So those who want to, who are already LMTs, but want to learn how to do, you know, the Ayurvedic massage and things like that. But any other things that you guys are planning from a continuing education um, perspective that you want to speak about? Well, um, oncology massage for sure is a really hot topic right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, working with special populations, veterans, hospice care, uh, uh, pregnancy massage, infant massage, all of those are going to be some topics. And we are very open to whatever your particular need is. So if you have a topic of interest, uh, definitely uh, send it to us. Um, geriatric massage is another one. Uh, working with, again, special populations, diabetics, uh, people who are on dialysis. So there's just a lot of continuing education, quality continuing education that's going to be out there, not to mention the methods. I know you talked about Ayurveda, um, like Lomi Lomi, um, again, craniosacral therapy. Oh, yeah. Um, there's just there's just so much out there that we're going to be offering. Um, but again, we want do want to hear from you guys to say, have you thought about this one? And our network is so large that we can find the right expert and either get them in here for a live class or an online class or both. Hybrid classes are becoming uh, the big wave or the, or the blended learnings with the blended learning models. Absolutely. And um, again, to Susan's point earlier, y'all check out our website, our faculty. I mean, like, I haven't met every single one of them, but the few that I've met, oh my gosh, like they are like, the rock stars of their specialties, right? So they will also be offering continuing education, um, I'm sure, in their you know very specialized fields as well. So um, I think it's going to be great. A um, couple of other questions coming through, um, Susan, if you don't mind, I'm just kind of speaking to the length of the program, and then I know our first session or. If you can speak to the blended learning online versus in person, um, I know our our initial program is going to be fully in person. There's absolute value to that, Susan. So if you don't mind speaking to that piece a little bit. 
Okay, so um, the program is going to be 700 hours, and to get those hours is Monday through Friday. And if I'm not mistaken, the aerobatic piece is Saturdays? Yes, there's seven Saturdays um, that we kind of build in, I think, starting in March. Okay, perfect, perfect. And um, as far as the, the now ours are going to be exclusively face to face, which I want to say is required by New Mexico. And in most states right now do not for, for our entry level training, this is not true for CEs, but for entry level training, for the most part, across the states, it has to be face to face uh, in person supervised practice. But the, we are going to be using a lot of online tools. I know that um, there's going to be Evolve, which is a companion site for your textbooks. This is your pathology textbook, like I showed you earlier. And this is going to be your foundational textbook, which is Massage Therapy Principles and Practice. And it's a, it's a big bad boy. That Susan's written, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, that I've written. Um, but again, uh, blended learning, uh, we're going to be using a lot of technology in the classroom. But we're also, it's really kind of an interesting blend because we tend to be very unplugged or our, our traditional um, in our approaches to learning. But when clearly the research says that technology does give an advantage, we're going to be using it. So we're going to be using uh, videos in our classroom, PowerPoint presentations in our classroom. We're going to be learning uh, using uh, using online tools for some of the uh, assessments, like your, your tests. Definitely uh, attendance will be online. You'll be able to access portals for to download assignments or download handouts or download uh, the PowerPoint presentations that we're going to be using in class. You'll have access to those. Um, so, uh, and again, I'm, and I'm, it's so funny because I'm kind of blown away by the technology that's being created. And I'm going to take it in service just to learn all the technology. So I'm excited about that. Um, but it's just going to be a very good blend of traditional and technology learning. Um, but again, the blend of learning is um, you'll be able to have some of, the, some of the lessons recorded. So in case you miss a class for whatever reason, you're allowed, of course, miss, I think it's 10% of, of the program. Um, but you can also maybe access those lectures online uh, that you want to either get or repeat. Because remember, the key to learning is repetition. Um, and definitely for our C classes, uh, we're going to be able to offer face-to-face -face online or blended options. So again, it's, it's really, really, you're going to kind of create what learning method, learning style, learning preference works best for you. Wonderful. And keep those things in mind whenever we're creating program, the different learning preferences. Absolutely. Susan, next question. Um, are there additional clinical hours that we would need to that we would need to fulfill after graduation or are we complete at graduation? You're going to be complete at graduation. When you get that certificate, you have done every single requirement. Now, the clinic hours um, are going to, it's going to be kind of interesting. Once you finish your Swedish learning and your foundational learning, your clinic hours will be on Fridays. So they'll be every single Friday throughout most of the program. And you will be required to receive, oh, no, oh darn, three out-of-class massages as part of your requirement. Those will be outside <laughs> of classroom hours. But, um, but, but other than that, as far as the practical part, no, nothing has, is required outside of class. Now, encouraged, absolutely, because you're gonna, if you're learning a technique in class, we do want you to be able to practice it at home, but you won't have a lot of time because you're gonna be back in the classroom the next day or back in the classroom over the weekend. And so, uh, so pretty much the classroom experience, uh, working with your classmates, practice, doing the supervised practice trades, and the, the clinical practicum, which is a public clinic, is all that is required. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, lots of questions about, are we gonna be offering this again? Yes, guys, this is a full on school. So um, we have a January session, and then we have another session that will be starting in June for another 16 weeks. And then um, currently, just so you guys know, because our program right now, the two that we have set, the Jan and the June session, are full-time. Um, we are in the process of creating a part-time program as well for those individuals who, you know, have work or other obligations. So this could look like a weekend program and or a morning or evening program as well. So Susan and her team are definitely starting to work on, again, just the logistics of how, um, how this would work. 
Um, okay, another question that I think I can answer is the school physically at the Ayurvedic Institute. So no, um, it's a good problem to have. You know, we have a lot of students enrolled at the Ayurvedic Institute this year as well. However, we are just right down the street. So proximity was a big deal for us, you know, so we do want to make sure that that connection is definitely still there. So know that we are all in relation. So the Ayurvedic Institute, Ayur Prana, and New Mexico School of Massage, um, we consider each one of them as sister entities. So they are functioning as one unit, just with three different, you know, um, I guess, focuses. So um, that, and then we don't offer housing, guys, but we will absolutely support in finding housing. So we have a lot of great resources in Albuquerque that we can support you guys through um, to find good housing that is, you know, close to school, where you're comfortable, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think I answered, well, the program be offered again um, the following year, 100%. So we're not looking to go away, okay? Um, Susan has created this phenomenal curriculum. And so, um, and Susan, please speak to, you know, your passion in education. I don't think you really um, spoke to that piece, but it does, I feel like, really make you who you are. So if you don't mind, you know, just speaking to that a little bit. Okay, so um, I got into massage basically through my love of herbology. And um, so I was pregnant and I met a lady who did massage. And I can remember uh, just the, the, the look of peace and joy and serenity in her face. I thought, I want to do what you do. I want to learn what you learn. And I know the benefit that it gave me as a client. And, um, and I really do believe that massage is a sustaining career because I like the physical aspect of it. I don't like to be sitting at a desk all day. I like the human connection of it. I feel like, and, and, and this is my, my uh, philosophy of teaching and it's philosophy as a practitioner. I believe that what massage therapist does is it makes the inaccessible accessible, makes it inaccessible accessible. So in terms of massage school, we are giving you tools to, to create a career. We're making the inaccessible accessible. But when you're working with clients, they, there might be a barrier between them and a pain-free life or them and a stress-free life. And you know it's accessible. You're just making that inaccessible piece accessible to them by giving that, them that experience of what it's like to not be stressed out or what it's like to not be in pain or what it's like to be able to move the neck of the shoulder or the lower back of the hip without uh, discomfort, improving their range of motion. And bottom line is improving the quality of their lives. So once again, we are at the school, we are improving the quality of our life, You're able to make a living and not only a living, but a, uh, a living that's fulfilling. We're giving you a meaningful life. Um, and, and I do believe that that is in service of others. And then uh, you are also giving that to your clients, improving the quality of their lives. So I just really feel like uh, massage is interesting. Every client you work on is so different. Even if though you've seen them a dozen times, they're going to be different when they lie on that table. Um, I just I like the challenge of it. I like being able to find out what do I need to do? I got, I got this toolkit and I've learned it in massage school or during my C class. I got this toolkit. What tool is going to be best for this client today to get the outcome that they're looking for? Um, so I, just, I love all those pieces. Um, and But again, bottom line is I love the community. I love the massage community. This is one of the reasons why I, you can't tear me from the classroom <laughs> because I love the kind of people who are attracted to this kind of profession because they typically have a big, big heart. They come to this profession wanting to help other people. And I just love being around those kind of people. And so uh, I just cannot say that this is a profession that you can grow old with. And, you know, you're helping people. People are, are feeling better before they leave your table. Oh, my gosh. How many things can you say that about? I just, I just really believe in the work. And I believe in the educational process to get students where they need to be to help other people. Absolutely. So um, I just have a big, uh, a big uh, love and, and, and passion for massage. I love that. And if you can't tell from that, guys, just spend a little bit of time with her and you'll see very quickly her passion for, for being an instructor and for this science in and of itself. Um, 
Susan, you've kind of alluded this alluded to this already, but I just think this is such a huge part of the massage world from what I am learning is that um, this network, this community. And can you talk a little bit about the support then post graduation um, and how, you know, kind of being in this world of massage really does does support post graduation? Okay. So um, going back to kind of a philosophy, whether a massage education or of or of uh, massage profession, I believe it's all about relationships. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be forming, you're going to be forming relationships with your teachers. Uh, you're going to be forming relationships between the content you're learning and your practice. You're going to be forming relationships with your classmates. And then you're going to be forming relationships with other massage practitioners uh, after graduation. And all of us support each other. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I really encourage you guys to to go to uh, alumni activities, to go to CE classes, to go to conventions and conferences. So you can kind of have a family reunion, reconnect with the people that are kind of your tribe. And I know that that term is used a lot, but I really do feel that way. I feel like massage therapists are, are your tribe. I have people who graduated, who took in classes from me decades ago, who still reach out. I would still reach out to my teachers and, um, and everybody that you meet meet is part of your your network um and so i just really believe that in this field it's all about relationships and it's been easier with social media i mean to email someone about a question to be able to attend a webinar i mean this is fantastic so even these these tools these social media and technology tools are ways to help us uh, not only form the relationships but also sustain those relationships. And, and you're going to be asked to be, be a relationship support network person for people who go to massage school after you. Uh, because, it, and, and, um, and as a mentor-mentee relationship, I still to this day, I, I uh, participate in mentor relationships, usually for massage instructors, sometimes for massage practitioners because I want to give back. And so, and really that whole volunteer piece, that whole network piece is a big part of a business success. So it's not just emotionally, socially nurturing, it's also part of your professional duty. I love it, I love it so much. So just a couple of other, um there's a few logistical questions that have come through and I know we're almost at time. Um, so one, I can't believe I forgot to answer this. I apologize, um, friends. Um, cost of the program. So we think we, I, I think the cost is totally doable. Um, for the full 16 weeks, it's $9,950. And then there is $600 of classroom fees, which includes your linens, your textbooks, your lubricants, all other, you know, teaching material. Um, and then we are running a special right now is that if you enroll by November 15th for the January session, you will get $1,500 off of your tuition, which is a great chunk of change. So um, if you have questions, again, about the application process or any other further information, please, please, please reach out. I want you guys to get that $1,500 discount um, off of your tuition, okay? Um, we do have payment plans available. Um, I, if you just send me an email, I can send you a document that outlines all of our payment plan options, okay? Um, and then just to clarify one more piece is that each of our sessions are 16 weeks. So the January session will go until mid-May, and that includes your spring break and everything. And then I think it's May 13th is your graduation. So if you start in January, you will end May 13th or May 14th, and you're done. Then if you start in June, you'll go until the end of September, beginning of October, and then you're done. So it's not that you have to do the full 10 months, okay? It's 16 weeks, and then you are ready for graduation, you're ready for your licensure exam, and then you're ready to practice. So, um, you know, I think this is so important to know is that in 16 weeks, you are career ready. You can start your practice, you can go into, you know, an existing space, all of these things that Susan was speaking about. Um, and 
Susan, I think this is a really great question to end on. And then, of course, friends, if you have more questions, just send them over, you know. And if I can't answer it, um, I'll connect with Susan. And she'll be happy to answer them as well. But um, considering the massage therapist profession, I found there's so many articles on massage therapist burnout. I was wondering if you could address this for me. Well, uh, burnout is basically a problem that happens when the therapist is not practicing self-care. So we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about self-care and self-care is basically uh, had body mechanics. It's uh, proper sleep hygiene. That's the term that they use in, in the research literature. It's about eating the proper foods that are, that are energy providing and not energy depleting because this is a physically demanding profession. Now I like it because it's physically demanding, um, but we're going to be teaching you tools to not get burnout. And, um, and again, I've been doing massage for 40 years and, uh, and, and again, but I do also practice self-care. I exercise almost every day. I practice yoga. Uh, I eat healthy. Um, and so we're going to be teaching you those tools to not, pre to prevent burnout. Um, burnout is a, uh, a but it's, it's true for all professions, it's just not just the massage profession. We are no different than nursing and in, or any other, um, uh, any other profession where there's a high degree of care provided, we're, we're caregivers basically. So um, we're going to be, and I will tell you, even in the medical profession, uh, burnout is high and they actually use massage to prevent burnout. So uh, there is not a lot. Uh, anyway, I know people talk about burnout a lot. There isn't a lot about research in the profession. So um, what else? Did I, oh yeah, yeah. One more thing about the, 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 our practice spectrum. We have a broad practice spectrum. We can fit into nursing homes, hospitals, spas, private practice, chiropractic clinics, uh, so many, many areas, house calls. The earning potential is pretty incredible. And if you look at the uh, United States Department of Labor, they say that massage has a bright outlook that right now there's more jobs available than therapists are to fill them. Wow. Yeah. There, now, again, for, for 16 hours of education, you're oh, able to, to graduate and make the minimum is $20. The maximum is closer to, to $60 an hour, depending on your practice setting. But um, it is a very lucrative career with not a lot of investment. Even if you want to take take the, the 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 cost of going through the school and divide it by the amount of uh, money you could be making, you you're you're paying yourself back in, in less than a year, and usually it's six months, which is another reason why I chose this profession because to me it was a good investment for the return if that makes sense, and um, and again I just I really feel like uh, it's a profession that I can that I can live with for the rest of my life. It's also a flexible career in that uh, I like to use the phrase uh, full-time pay for part-time work. Because even if you look at what full-time is in, in this profession, it's about 25 massages a week. That's about what full-time, it's not 40 hours, you're not doing 40 hours of massage. You're doing about 25 hours of sessions per week. Um, and again, hopefully in that other 15 hours, you're doing business-related activities. You're washing linens, you're booking appointments, you're hopefully taking care of yourself. Uh, doing stretching and that kind of stuff in between clients. But um, but it is a wonderful profession that's flexible to where you can have a life, not just a job or a career. You can have a family, you can travel, you can go to CE classes. Um, so it just, it's a wonderful profession. I cannot say enough about just the profession of massage. I love it. Thank you so much, Susan. So just to kind of recap, guys, we are a little over time, but I will quickly recap. Um, remember, our applications are open for our January session. Our June session will be opening very soon as well. So if you are interested in the June session, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Send me an email just so we can stay in touch. Um, Go to nmschoolofmassage.com to access our application. And then we are running that promotion right now. If you enroll before November 15th, um, you do get $1,500 off. Biggest takeaway, Susan is the best. She is the Yoda of massage. Um, so please come come to us. You are going to get, I mean, 
I can't even speak enough about how great of an education you're going to be getting if you join us. So um, please, please, please take advantage of this amazing opportunity. And then um, anything else you guys need, we are 100% here for you, myself, Susan. Um, and we have a huge team behind us that is here to support you guys. So Susan, thank you so much. And then We'll be doing another webinar here in a couple of weeks. Um, again, very similar, but if you know other questions come up, please join us at that time as well. Um, and we will be on the lookout for you guys. So thank you, thank you. Um, and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye, y'all.